Hello, welcome back. In this uh, module, we're going to go over some advanced topic. Uh, we can actually go over how to compute your holding period return and also how to modify the method that we will discuss so you can compute you to maturity or you to hold, you to call, uh, all those different types of yields. So let's get started. As we mentioned in our last video, the actual return that you get from investing in a bond depends on the purchase price, uh, the amount of coupon that you get, and also whether or not you hold on to the bond until it matures. If you um, sell the bond ahead of the maturity day, your actual return will be based on the will be affected by the selling price and will be different from the yield to maturity. So here are the important elements, your initial purchase price, which is considered the present value. Again, we're going to go back to remember we talk about uh, time value of money calculation. We're going to apply that in this problem. Uh, the coupon payment each period is your periodic payment or your annuity payment. Uh, the number of coupon payments that you actually receive and how much you get when at the end of the investment. So at the end of the investment can be your resale price or it can be the maturity day which will then be the principal or the face value uh, if you get called then you'll be the call price so to find the bond on your the return on your bond investment we're going to use the time value of money function now we have seen this before but when we are computing the return for a bond um, the inflow versus outflow assumption is very important so what we need to what i usually do is to make the purchase price which is the amount that you pay make this as your outflow so this will be entered as a negative number and then the everything else is going to be an inflow so the coupon payment and the res sale price will both be in flows. We'll go first step by step how to do this calculation. Just one more reminder, you can, you, you can use the same calculation to compute you to maturity or you to call. So let's get started. The first thing you should do is pause the video and then enter this into the assumption area. Pay very close attention to make sure that you start at the top left hand corner of your spreadsheet. So the assumption should be put into cell A1. And make sure that the numbers are entered by themselves. Don't include any labels. So this should be in column B. Make sure the $1,000 is located in row two in column B. Uh, that will affect the formula that you'll be using. So make sure that you enter the assumption area correctly uh, as you set up your model. So go ahead, pause the video and enter this part. And then when we come back, we'll do this together. Okay, welcome back. Now, uh, double check to make sure that you have entered the assumptions correctly and you have set up the labels correctly. So uh, we are computing the return on bonds. If you are not ready, pause the video again and set up your spreadsheet accordingly. We're going to start with entering the first formula. This formula is going to compute the annual coupon payment. So remember in the lecture, we said the annual coupon payment is equal to the coupon rate times the face value. And the coupon rate is located in cell B3 and the face value is located in cell B2. That's why the formula is B2 times B3. So you can use, you can start with the equal sign and then you can use the arrow key or your mouse to go up to cell B2 and then multiply. So put in the uh, asterisk for multiplication and then go to B3 and press enter. So you'll notice that if you look at the formula for this particular cell, it says equals B2 times B3, exactly as what you have the formula. So, and then we'll do the next one. The next one is B4, B10. So B10 is what we just computed. So this is the annual coupon payment divided by the number of times you receive per year. So number of coupons payment per year. So if interest is paid twice per year, that will be two. So our annual coupon payment is $42.50 and 
each time you get $21.25. Next is the number of coupon payment that you receive all together. That's B5 times B4. So B5 is the number of years. You have a total of five years, but you get paid twice per year. So you get a total of 10 payments. The purchase price, we're just copying it down so that it is easy for us to use. So that's $1,020. And the resale price is $975. So if you look at the formula that we have here, it's basically in here, the formula is what you will put into the cell and it will give you the correct calculation. And now we're going to use the time value of money tool, which is the interest rate. So if you call up the interest rate, it actually gives you hints on what goes into each argument. So the first argument is number of period. And our number of period is 10 because we have a total of 10 coupon payments. We'll separate each argument by a comma. So we'll use comma. The next argument is payment per period. We know that the payment per period is $21.25. That's in cell B11. And then the next one is the present value. Remember the present value is the purchase price. And there is an outflow. So we have to put a negative sign there. So minus. And the outflow and the purchase price is $1,020. Once again, we'll separate that with a comma. And the last argument is the future value. So that's the resale price in this particular example. We have completed all the argument. We close the parenthesis and press enter. And once again, if you look at the formula on the top, it will show you the same formula as shown on next to the um, the hint. And that is how you count compute return. Uh, to change the utility maturity for this bond is very straightforward. Instead of the resale price, if you want to compute the utility maturity, you simply replace that with the face value. And the face value we know is $1,000. And this will become your U2 maturity. So it's the same calculation if you change uh, the face value or you change the call price. When you change, replace the, this with the call price, this will become the U2 call. So this one model will en enable you to compute the U2 maturity, the U2 call, and the holding period return. I, expect, I encourage you to experiment with it and feel comfortable with modeling in Excel. We will stop here for this extended advanced exercise. In the next video, I will be seeing you soon and we will talk about stock investments.